welcome everyone to a another video and it's with me obviously red pants cat rants and yeah this is kind of a four part story not sort of a four part story but it's four different stories that we're going to sort of do in one video because they all sort of relate to each other in one way or another uh except the last one the last one's more of a no, actually, they kind of all do relate to each other in some way. But anyways, um, the first one comes from NBC News, and that is that a man's been found guilty of a hate crime. Um, it's for murdering a, a trans teen. Um, there's no excuse for what happened to Nikki, this hate crime. Women in our community, the Facebook group Justice for Nikki, wrote in light of the findings. So this happened in uh, Vancouver, Washington. A 27-year-old man has been convicted of second-degree murder and a hate crime offence in the death of a transgender teen in Washington State two years ago, um, this occurred. And Clark County Superior Court jury returned the verdict Friday against David Bogdanov, the Columbia, a Colombian newspaper reported. Prosecutor said Bogdanov met 17-year-old Nikki um, Kuhnhausen in a downtown Vancouver in June 2019, and that he strangled her with a phone charge cable after engaging in um relations. Yeah, um, this is a really, really horrible story. Um, the family were and supporters were happy with the verdict, but obviously tearful at the same time because of how horrible and heinous this act is. Um it is very much one of them where it it's I don't even think the word bit is sweet it, it is appropriate. It's more like a grieving cavernous hall with a tiny flicker of light at the very bottom. And the light will never make the hole go away. It'll never make it any better. But I don't even know how to describe it. But they said um, we were all holding our hands while we were waiting the verdict to be read. And that was really powerful, said Lyndon Walls, a member of the group Justice for Nikki. It felt like we were all together. And the sense of relief that came um, that we got Justice for Nikki that we were able to push this, and the jury could see it and did the right thing. Bogdanov of Vancouver claimed self-defense, testifying that he wrapped the card around the shoulder to prevent the reaching for a gun um, that he had in the driver's seat after he ordered her to get out of the car. And apparently the card slipped to his neck. That This story was not believed. He faces a range of 11 to 19 and a half years in prison. And he'll be sent on September the 9th. Honestly, I think that's too short. <sighs> I'm sorry, but if you kill someone, then you should be in jail for life. That, 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 there's no coming back from that. So after the death, Bogdanov dumped um, Nikki's body down the side of Larch Mountain and fled the country to Ukraine and called a friend to destroy his vehicle, according to the testimony of the trial. So obviously you knew what he did was wrong. Through self-defense, you wouldn't do that. You would call the police and report, you know, an incident. And obviously it's more further evidence that everything he said during the trial was an absolute lie. Um, but this is really, really a horrible, disgusting thing to talk about. And, you know, it's hurtful, right? It, it hurts everyone. And... It's just sad to see that someone so young um, got into a bad situation and this happened and, yeah. In March 2020, Governor Jack Inslee signed into law House Bill 1687, which was dubbed the Nikki uh, Kuhnhausen Act that prevents a criminal defence based on the discovery of a victim's actual or perceived identity, general and gender identity or um, their orientation. Um, yeah, I think that's a good law to be implemented. Um, 
it's a bullshit defense, right? So it's good that they implemented this law to prevent um, anyone from trying to use such a nonsense defenses to an excuse for what they did. And yeah, it's just horribly sad. You know, thankfully the guy's going to get put away, but obviously 11 to 20 years is not long enough. It should be life. And this goes on to hate crimes um, in the US. And apparently according to the FBI, the current rate of hate crimes in the US is the highest it's been in 12 years. One ten thousand people reported to law enforcement last year that they were the victim of a hate crime because of, um, you know, the race, ethnicity, orientation, gender, religion, or disabilities. And the number has, you know, been on the rise in recent years, according to the FBI annual hate crime statistics. And the report released on Monday found more than 7,700 criminal hate crimes incidents were reported to the FBI in 2020. An increase about 450 over 2019. The increase comes from even fewer agency. Even the increase comes even as fewer agencies, local authorities around the country, have actually been reporting the crimes to the FBI. Um, I don't know whether it's required or not, but I think that it isn't required for all jurisdictions to report it. Um. And this increase that the FBI saw has been where less jurisdictions have actually been reporting it. And now that's like one of two things. Um, firstly, it shows that there's a general increase, right? If there's less jurisdictions and it's gone up, then there's a definite increase. But also um, the fact that other jurisdictions aren't reporting it probably means that where they are, um, has a high rate of cases and they just don't want to talk about it. So there's been attacks, um, you know, against black people, Asian people, all that various people. But the attacks on these groups have significantly increased. Uh, I'm not sure on the percentages because I haven't done the math for this, but it looks like um, nearly... A double rise for hate crimes against um, black people, and almost a double rise again. No, about half right. No, what did you say about hundred eighty? Yeah, probably like um, an eighty percent increase in crimes against um, targeting Asians, and you know it all comes from the. COVID-19, all the false information, um, all the propaganda that was put out even by, you know, uh, even by uh, Western governments and Western news agencies that uh, labelled it certain things. And then also all the Facebook uh, misinformation, the Twitter information, the... Um, you know, the, the viral memes that went round and the jokes and all that that gets into people's heads. And it's just not right, right? It's not right at all. And, oh, it's sad to see. But according to the FBI report, 62% of victims were either targeted because of their race or ethnicity, up, to, up from 58% in 2019. About 20% were victimized because of their orientation based in bias in uh, 2020, and 13% because of religious beliefs, the FBI said. So, it, you know, it's not targeting one group, it's targeting a lot of groups, and it is horrible. It's definitely a thing, and yeah, it, it's a thing. Obviously, I'll leave the link down below so you guys can read through it fully. There's a lot of information in here. Oh. You know, it, you shouldn't have to experience this in your daily life. You know, regardless of where you're from, what you believe, you know, just the way you were born. Um, no one should have to face abuse or ridicule or discrimination. You know, your life choices are your life choices. And at the end of the day, as long as you're not, like, physically hurting someone, then what you do is 
you know, fine. You know, don't psychologically and physically hurt people. You're not doing that. If you're just living your life and being your true self, um, then you shouldn't be persecuted, Brit. Right? Uh, treat everyone how you want to be treated. You know, you live your life and you do what you want and you try not to upset people. And people shouldn't attack you because they don't like you based upon something that you can't change. But anyway, we're moving on from the CNN article to an AP News article. And this is about an ex-death row, in, ex row inmate who has gotten one million for wrongful imprisonment. Holy crap, this is sad to see. And this is why... Um, I'm against the death penalty. Uh, and it's simply because of situations like this, where it's there's evidence that the person didn't do it. So this is from Cleveland, a former death row inmate who was wrongly imprisoned for two decades, has will receive a one million dollar payout from the state. The Ohio Controlling uh, Board bought unanimously Monday to make the award to Joe D'Ambrosio. The money will come from the state's wrongful imprisonment fund, which is part of a 2019 change in the law that allows people free from prison because of their plea, because of police or prosecutorial misconduct to be eligible for compensation for serving prison time. D'Ambrosio's uh, attorney, Terry Gilbert, told Cleveland.com that the payment was a major victory that will allow his client to move forward in his life and feel that he received some form of justice from the state of Ohio. Now, I'm going to say two things here. Yes, a million dollars is a lot of money, but two decades of your life is a fucking long time. I'm just saying that now, right? It, it's a long time. So, yeah, the boss is in consumers up there. Cuyahoga County Prosecutor Michael O'Malley dropped an appeal opposing a judge's ruling that D'Ambrosio was wrongly imprisoned, but urged state officials not to compensate him. A spokesman for O'Malley said Monday that his office was working on a comment. And, you know, he, he was accused of crime. There was apparently evidence there that was withheld, that wasn't um, introduced, that exonerated him. This was judge's decision. He looked at the evidence and the evidence that wasn't um, presented in court. And he decided that that evidence was sufficient enough to, you know, invalidate this conviction to prove that it was wrongful. And yeah, it is horrible. It is sad to see. And it does happen. It happens to many people. I'm not saying it happens to everyone. I'm not going down that route. Obviously, there's people who will cry wolf and say they didn't do it when they did, um, or they'll deny it, or they'll say they did something else, right? But also, at the same time, there is genuinely people who haven't done anything but have just been profiled, and in order to close a case, people in power, in positions, um, looking for clout, looking to make a name for themselves, looking to get up that ladder, will do shady stuff and, you know, incriminate the wrong people just to fit a narrative, to fit a story, to fit their profile of what they think the person is. And, yeah, rather than following the evidence to find the perpetrator, they will make the evidence point to the person they want to have been guilty instead of the person who is actually guilty. And that's the wrong mentality. It's completely the wrong mentality. But it is often the case. And, well, I say often the case. It's often the case in these situations where it's someone or some people who are trying to boost some numbers, who don't want bad press, they were trying to make it look like um, they're getting achievements, you know, whatever it might be, or even just to further their own career, right? It, it's a varied bunch of reasons, but it does happen. 
But yeah, moving on to the final article um, for this video. This one's like fucking messed up, dude, and comes back into like the hate crime kind of shit. Like, I don't even know what the hell this was about. But this is from NBC News as well. And this was um, a, obviously, a um, reporter, a journalist, a field operative, a field reporter, who was just out in um, Mississippi um, following Hurricane Ida and was uh, checking up on uh, Louisiana, just at the beach, giving a report, doing his job, doing his duty, right? And he gets harassed by a man. So we're going to watch the video of it. Um, I'll let the video play, and then I'll sort of talk about it afterwards. Um, it's only about a minute long for this segment, and then we'll pause it, but yeah. I'm sorry I can't full screen this properly as well, but um, this video player on NBC is always funky and doesn't do what I want, so I'm sorry that it isn't like full screen. on the beach right now and that's the sense that you're getting that the rain has stopped the wind is still Shaquille going there Brewster, i think we the have a random person going around you know i'm going to turn this way because you know we deal with you some people every once in a while but you can uh, you know, one thing that we are noticing is that the mayor said the he does the right thing steps away tries to be fresh and continue for at least a, until a period of time in which they can yeah. go ahead and go and survey all the damage they did get some reports of some down power yeah. lines of some trees that have fallen or at least limbs that have fallen so they're going to go ahead and do that survey to make sure that they're okay craig i'm going to talk hear him back screaming. to you because we have a uh, person yeah. who needs yeah. a little help right now yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey and you hey, can hey, see hey, that hey. and yeah hey um we're gonna check in with shaq brewster just to make sure all is well uh there's a lot of crazy out there a lot of crazy and yep so you saw that for yourselves right and it's just disgusting i mean the guy's just dead doing his job he i will give this to him and they have said it in this article um a lot of people have said it um, online as well. His colleagues have said it. The correspondent, um, Shaquel Brewster, he was absolutely professional. He stepped away. He moved to the side so they could continue recording. He tried to, you know, not be confrontational. He didn't um, be aggressive in any way. He just kept doing his job. And then when he couldn't do his job anymore, he didn't go after the guy. He didn't lose his temper he just backed away put his arm up to cover you know he's chin and mouth in like so if anything happened he could like raise his arm to protect himself and yeah but this is just disgusting behavior i i have no idea what the hell that guy was thinking what's going through his head what problems he has there's clearly something going on there um i'm hoping at most that he was just having a bad day that um because of what was going on with the hurricane and stuff, that he was just, you know, just stressed, scared, worried, and that made him behave rationally. But at the same time, I can't help but think he saw a TV crew and he saw someone of a different, you know, ethnicity, and he just kind of went after them, or he just doesn't like mass media. Like, there could be many reasons, right? And I don't want to um, say it's this or that because I don't know. But clearly there's some issue there that caused him to do that. And hopefully it was just stress-related. And after all, the hurricane stuff blows over. He'll be fine and everything. But that was clearly a person who was extremely angry, extremely stressed, unhinged. I don't know how to describe it. Um, that was a person who was not in a calm, collected frame of mind. They were clearly distressed. And yeah, the Shaquille Brewster, he tweeted a few minutes afterwards. Um, once the guy had been taken away, once he had been dealt with, obviously he didn't go back on air, but um, he tweeted afterwards um, five, ten minutes later. I'm not quite sure how long it was. But um, moments later, he did tweet that he was okay and that he wasn't hurt and that he was fine. And Craig Melvin, who is um, the anchor that was on show, you know, he says it's beyond unacceptable, disgusting. You know, um, Shaq Brewster, he was just trying to do his job on a beach in Goldport, Mississippi. Shaq is okay. The guy who nearly attacked him is clearly not. 
I think, like, I agree with that. There's clearly something going on there, and yeah. But holy crap, um, I'll give it to Bruce that he was so professional in that. So, so professional. Like, if you want to know how to act in a confrontational situation, um, especially something so public as that, where you're live on air, that, that's how you act. Um, obviously, if you're attacked, you defend yourself. Once you're attacked, right, you defend yourself. But he he just protect himself. You can see him here, he's just raising his arm. He's not doing anything, he's just raising his arm up just so if anything comes at him, he can protect himself whether he's going to get hit in the chest or whether he's going to get hit in the face. He's just making sure that he has his arm up, that he's walking backwards. You can see his other hand is down, he's not clenching his fists or nothing. He's just walking back. And yeah, deeply distressing. Sad to see. Sad to see, and yeah. Anyways, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button, comment down below, as always, subscribe, let me know what you guys thought of the video, and yeah, we've talked about some interesting topics today, let me know what you think about all of them, I think this one at the end was, um, was, you know, particularly shocking, and first story as well, um, was very heartbreaking to hear, so yeah, guys, let me know what you think, and comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.